Mrs. Marcos, what about my family? I remember my mother wrote a book about your early childhood life and you didn't have a good reaction to it at the beginning. Um, I did not have any reaction because many of them was not true. They, they assassinate, they, they vilified so much. My, my, my father who was an outstanding human being. When my mother died, his second wife, he took good care of us and concentrated with his family. This is the reason why all of us, and one of us is a nun, in fact. That is why even when I was um, at the verge of dying, coughing blood in the trial, and they were giving me medical severance, I rejected medical severance. I said, more than life, I value vindication and the truth. Money and power you take with you only up to the grave. But truth and honor you take with you beyond the grave unto infinity. My father was, was of the three brothers. He was the only doctor of laws. He was a scholar. He was a Renaissance man. He was a composer. He was a, a poet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know why. And, and he went to take care of us, the, the, the six children of his second wife, because his first wife died. And we were six when my mother died. I was eight, barely eight. And the youngest was four months. And my father, at that point in time, one of his, uh, when I was born, the mayor of Manila was Romualdez. Justice of the Supreme Court was a Romualdez, a, br a brother of his. There were three Romualdes, all lawyers, but my father was the only doctor of laws. And my, then my mother and father felt that if they were to come back after martial law was declared in 72, that they would be arrested. They have no doubt about that. And also for me as well, they were worried about me coming back at that I, time. I, I, I do not know why, why they were thinking that way because Mount Pio Pedrosa was a very good friend of the family, of the Romualdes family. I don't know, I have no, even those people who wrote against me, I was always nice to them. I have no ill feeling with anybody. I don't take, even when they say something wrong about me, who was by the bedside also of Mrs. Ramos and, and Mrs. and, and, and um, my niece uh, Betsy, I was the one there. I, even those, anyway, if I am at peace with the truth, even they say, Imelda, you're cross-eyed. What I will do is, I will look at the mirror, I'm not cross-eyed, the truth is still with me. I'm not angry with the person. I am sorry for them for not seeing the truth. And believe you me, I'm not answering anymore the truth because about this book or that book, so much has been written about me. I remember very well when I was coming um, for the, we were entering Malacanang for the first time and we just came from the grandstand and the people in Malacanang when they saw me, oh, our first lady is so pretty and beautiful, even her, the soles of her feet are pink, kahit nang sakong niya marusas rusas. Then I told Marcos Ferdinand, this is a frightening place. He said, why? I said, he said, even my, the color of my souls, they can see. He said, Imelda, when you become president, you enter history. When you enter history, you will be judged unto infinity. Y your story sounds like when Princess Diana went to Buckingham Palace. You were someone who came from a very different background and entered into the corridors of power. Is, it, is that right? Is that what you mean? No. Mark just told me that when you become president and enter, history will be judged unto infinity, so we have to be careful. But in my case, our family, whatever they say, we went to later. My father was not impoverished. My father was a doctor of laws.